Hi, this is Dylan Crane. I'm doing my book report on the Hunger Games. Uh, first step was to name why the author of the book chose the name of the book. Uh, I think it, that Suzanne Collins chose the name of the book because, like, that's what the whole thing is, like, kind of based on. Like, I think it'd be inappropriate to call it anything else because that's what the main subject of the book is, like, the Hunger Games. I don't think it'd be, it'd be weird to call it Katniss's, like... I don't know, adventure or something weird like that, because although she's the main character of the book, I think the broader spectrum of the book is The Hunger Games. Uh, summary of the book. So, like, there's these 12, 13 districts plus the capital, and they're, uh, they're on a country that's, like, basically consists of, like, all the United States is Pan Am, and a long time ago there was a war, and... 13 colonies rebelled against the capital that was like ruling over them and then the capital won and the capital uh in order to remind the people of the 12 districts about what, what happens they made this thing called the hunger games so a boy and a girl from each of the uh districts spanning between 13 and 18 would fight in a battle to the death where there, where there was only one winner so that was 24 kids 12 boys and 12 girls they'd fight to the death and there's only one winner and it was to remind each of the districts about like how they shouldn't rebel and it was more of like what it stood for to the districts and it's supposed to be something they were dreaded um Katniss is the main protagonist she is really strong and she's really good with a bow and arrow because in district 12 it's super poor over there and often she'd have to go into the woods and like she'd have to go kill food for her family and bring it back to them and she got really good with a bow and arrow that will come back later but her sister and her mother live with her well more or less her sister and her live with her mom but uh, her father died when she was super young, and uh, she has kind of taken up, like, the more masculine role of the family, like, trying to do everything for them and provide for them, because the mom hasn't really taken the death too well, and she doesn't really do much, but her and Prim are really close, and, yeah, and Prim's more of, like, a sweetheart, and she's more kind, and her, uh, Katniss is more of, like, a masculine type person she's really smart and she doesn't trust many people except the ones that she knows she can trust and yeah and because prim is turning 13 the draw for the hunger games who are going to be in the hunger, hunger games is coming up and against all odds like against everything even though it's her first time being entered in the hunger games uh she gets picked first to be the girl for the uh district 12 and Katniss is like tripping out she's like oh my god and out of like heroism uh Katniss decides to volunteer a tribute for her sister because she doesn't think it's fair that her sister was only 13 and she will she will probably die in the higher games and Katniss sacrifices that for her sister and the other person that gets picked is PETA, who Katniss kind of knows. Uh, she thinks he has a crush on her. And, like, he's a baker, and he's super charming, and pretty much everyone he comes in contact with likes him. And he becomes more of, like, the face of District 12 during the Hunger Games this year. But that would come up more later. And she gets on a bus, not a bus, a train to go to the, uh, uh what's it called? T the capital where they start to train for the Hunger Games. And, uh, they meet Hamish, which is the only other District 12 winner. And he's like some drunk guy. And he doesn't really, like, care about the other people, about Katniss and Peta, because. He won a while ago, and he was set on to train the other people from District 12 from previous Hunger Games, and they all died in really quickly because 
they had such low morale for they'd win, so he just pretty much gave up. But, yeah, Katniss and him and Peta, they talk for a while about just, like, Peta and Katniss are asking for answers, and he's just like, listen, I really don't care. You guys are screwed, and you guys are just going to have to live with that, and you just got the bad look of the draw. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much on the train ride to the capital. And once they get to the capital, they start training, and Peta... No, Katniss really likes the bow while they're training because, like, she obviously uses it at home and she has a lot of experience with that. And it's, like, her main weapon of choice. But Peta, he's... Although he's, like, super charming and handsome, he's not really, like, more of the physical type and he doesn't really do a lot of, like, the swords and stuff, but he's very strong because he had to pick up so many... Uh, uh grain like bag grain things so he's very strong and he's able to like throw a boulder like 30 yards away that's like 500 pounds or something like that i forgot how heavy it was but it was really impressive and it really surprised all the other tributes that were training and during the interview with the capital um like do they they do this giant big interview and they interview all the the four, 24 tributes uh when Peta is up before Katniss he announces them as star-crossed lovers so it like gives them more sponsors and what the sponsors do is they give them more um more of a chance to survive because they can send them supplies like people from the capital who like are rooting for a certain person can send them supplies like super minor stuff like food or like anything like that and it helps them a little bit, but Katniss really doesn't like it. And she's kind of like blushing a little bit. But once they get into the games, uh, the tributes, they all line up and they go to war with each other. And I don't, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I've already, it's already seven and a half minutes and I still have a lot to talk about. But they fight and more towards the end, like when Katniss and peter coming towards the end of their the last few tributes are still alive the game makers who run the games decide to if it's a boy and the girl from the same district there can be two winners so pita and katniss they both get really excited that they both both might be able to make it out of there and then kato who's from district one or two i can't remember i'm pretty sure he's from district two um he's like the Almost like the main antagonist for Peta and, and uh, Katniss because he's like the what like the strong by far one of the strongest pers people that was in the Hunger Games, and he was a menace to them throughout the beginning, and they eventually killed him. And at the end, the game makers decided that they were gonna overturn the rule that there could be two winners and there can only be one. And to defy the capital in their sick game and to, like, protest it. They both decided to kill each other so that there would be no winner. And it would be sort of message to, like, the capital that, like, they're not... They don't really govern the cap... The, the districts well enough and that it's a sick game and it needs to stop. And eventually the game makers, they see and they're like, okay, okay, I find two winners so that that doesn't happen because obviously that would be bad for the capital if that happened. All right, this is another clip because my video froze. Um, favorite line in the book is when there's like the saying that all the, uh, not the tributes, but the people say is happy Hunger Games and... It's Effie Trinket, the girl who announces, who's picking the drawing for the uh, the tributes. She says, Happy Hunger Games, and f will the odds forever be in your favor? Uh, it's it's really ironic because like the you have really strong odds against you that you're going to win. It's basically like a 1 out of 24 that you're going to win. 
and it's almost wishing everyone that in the Hunger Games like bad luck because you're probably not gonna win and it's really something that sticks with the tributes and something they all remember especially Katniss when she is going through her adventure so to speak through the Hunger Games uh it really sticks with her that message and there's another part there's another quote hold on i wrote it down on my notes here um um hold on the second quote that i found the best was when Peta, or when Katniss confessed her love to Peta, and Peta was like you love me like you really love me for real like it's not a it's not a game and uh they both Katniss was really excited because or no Peter was really excited excuse me because he really liked her from the beginning and at first it was supposed to just be a show but then it ended up being for real that they both loved each other and yeah uh the last step or last few steps if I could change something about the book it'd probably be um I don't know there's not really much I'd change about the book I really enjoyed it um, maybe I noticed in the book that it was all in the first person of Katniss. Maybe to change it up a little bit, they could have, um, maybe, uh, made it in perspective of like, hey, Mitch, while the Hunger Games was going on, so you can get a different perspective of like how the Hunger Games was affecting the people on the outside and not just in the first person of Katniss and yeah that's the end thank you